Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
prayers for forgiveness and healing before the Blessed Sacrament. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are before our Lord who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Heavenly Father, you know my needs, and you feel my pain, trials, and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we begin with our guided contemplation with the Gospel, to familiarize ourselves with the Gospel text for our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 52 to 59, in which Jesus proclaims, My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. The Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. 
Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. He taught this doctrine at Capernaum in the synagogue. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the Gospel that we just heard proclaimed to help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's Word and also to prepare our hearts for our guided contemplation prayer. Thus far, in the Gospel, Jesus has been performing miracles like the multiplication of the loaves and proclaiming that those who hear his word must believe in him as he offers the gift of eternal salvation sent by his heavenly Father. However, in this passage of John's Gospel, Jesus specifies very clearly the truth about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. For he explicitly says, Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink, and he will live in me, and I live in him. For this is the bread that has come down from heaven, and anyone who eats this bread will live forever. My brothers and sisters in Christ, when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist at Holy Communion, we precisely believe in these very specific words of Jesus in St. John's Gospel. We truly believe that He is indeed giving us, through the sacrament of the Eucharist, His real flesh and His real blood under the appearance of bread and wine. What happens when two persons freely and with witnesses and a priest within the church, each professes the promise that they will take each other as husband and wife, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honour you all the days of our life. Before they professed these words, they were separate, independent individuals. But after they professed these words of promise freely, they are each transformed into the union of the one body as husband and wife. And as such, they are no longer two separate individuals as they were before. Although externally, they remain the same in appearance. Internally, or in the eyes of the church, and even in the eyes of the law, they are no longer two persons, but one united person with God in the sacrament of marriage. In other words, the truth is that words that express our intentions are binding and brings about real transformation in the lives of people. When a validly ordained priest in a Catholic church proclaims the words of Jesus in persona Christi, which is in the person of Christ, says, this is my body and this is my blood during the celebration of the Eucharist, the bread and wine is truly transformed into the true body and blood of Christ. As Jesus in today's Gospel proclaims and promises that the bread and wine are truly his real flesh and his real blood. This truth that is professed and celebrated by Jesus himself during the Last Supper with his Apostles and is being practiced and believed as such of Jesus having instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist has since then 
and in the early Christian community of believers been practiced. As in today's gospel scene, during Jesus' time, many could not accept what Jesus has proclaimed and was offering them. They started, sadly, arguing with each other and objected strongly. How can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? This, they say, is intolerable language. My sisters and brothers in Christ, for those of us who are privileged to have the gift of faith of Jesus in the Eucharist, let us continue to develop and deepen our love for Jesus in the Eucharist. We will take up this truth during our contemplation prayer. This is also one of the main reasons why in our series, we have the exposition of the Eucharist and the benediction. My brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation proper, I urge you to please switch off your mobile phones and set up a conducive ambience for your prayer. Please also note that as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find what I say to be helpful to your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in some other personal way, then simply ignore what I'm saying. Please also note that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation. They are to give you the sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. And if you wish to have more details of the structure of this guided gospel contemplation and also listen to the introduction of this series, please click on to the button at the bottom of this video. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. And let us begin by composing ourselves. Close your eyes, sit upright, and focus your attention on your nostrils and become aware of your breathing. The air that is entering your nostrils is giving you life. And every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life. For as soon as we stop breathing, we will die. God who gives you the gift of life is present within your heart and is loving you personally and intimately. Get in touch with God's infinite love within you and thank the Lord for everything. Prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we ask you for the grace to be able to deepen our love for you through the divine gift of your Son to us 
in the Eucharist. Send your spirit to renew our gratitude for this most precious gift of the body and blood of your Son that we need for our eternal salvation. Imagine yourself at the scene where you are with a community of Jews who were keen to learn more about what Jesus is proclaiming. It is a warm day and many have gathered under the shades of trees waiting to listen to Jesus. Jesus comes before them. He knows very well that their minds and hearts are close to the truth of the gospel of salvation that he had been proclaiming. However, in the hope that some of them may still be open to the truth, Jesus said, Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Sadly, many of the people gathered began to argue with one another. They say, how can he give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? This is intolerable language. Jesus looks at them with great sadness in his heart. Jesus could see that they were interpreting what he has said on the superficial level as their minds were closed and their hearts were hardened by their stubborn resistance. But Jesus looks at them with much compassion and observes how they were arguing with one another. Then Jesus adds further, 
and those who eat my flesh and drinks my blood will live in me and I live in him. For this is the bread that has come down from heaven. And anyone who eats this bread will live forever. With these words, their resistance and objection became even more adamant. As the crowd were arguing and getting increasingly unruly, Jesus looked at them and looked at the apostles and also at you. And he asked you, Do you believe what I have just said? There was a great silence among all of you. You then look into your heart and say to yourself, Yes, Lord, I do believe that at the Holy Communion that we receive at Mass is truly your real flesh and your real blood. Recall the times you have attended Masses. How frequent do you attend Mass? Do you look forward to attending Mass? Or is it more of an obligation to fulfill as a Catholic. And when you do actually attend Mass, do you participate attentively and pray fervently during Mass? How deeply grateful are you for the gift of the Eucharist as Jesus in today's Gospel reminds us for this is the bread that has come down from heaven and anyone who eats this bread will live forever.
Would you be where you are today in your faith if not for the Eucharist? Just then, Jesus looks at you with much affection and love. Speak to the Lord in your own words of what you wish to say to Him for the gift of the Eucharist that offers eternal life to you and to all believers. Become aware that you are now leaving the gospel scene and that you are now in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope the contemplation that we just had has helped us appreciate more deeply the gift of the Eucharist that offers eternal life. However, after the contemplation, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review only needs to take some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during the prayer. So get in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and describe your experiences. As such, you may now close your eyes as you click the pause button and spend the next few minutes making a review of your contemplation prayer. After which, you may resume this session. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer and would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, please click the button below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you would soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. 
So please take one patient step at a time and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experiences of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. Thank you for your attention and we shall now move on to the next part of our session which is the benediction. You have given us bread from heaven. Having in itself all delight. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption, you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I and everyone have our personal needs. Many of us are grappling with different issues regarding our health, our family, work, and many others that very often the burdens seem unbearable and overwhelming. We wish we had a fairy magic wand to wipe out the problems we are facing, or how we wish God would come to our rescue and bail us out of our pains and trials of life. Or perhaps God be the magic wand that we fantasize about. However, you and I know that the problems we encounter in life cannot be swept under the carpet and ignored. They have to be embraced with courage and compassion, out of love for God and one another. And such, and to turn our problems into meaningful challenges. However, to embrace meaningful challenges in our lives, you and I know that we have our human limitations and beyond which we are quite helpless. However, regardless of how painful and overwhelming our challenges may be, those of us who are blessed with the gift of faith are called never to forget that we are never alone, that God sees our challenges and will reach out to care for us. However, for God to reach out to us, we must first be conscious and be willing to trust in His compassionate love and to draw strength from Him who will never fail us. To live a more discerning life is precisely our need to be reminded that God, who is merciful, knows and feels our pain and will always be there for us. You will remember that in our earlier session, 7, we reflected on the true story of how Jasmine always found that God has never failed to give her the strength to persevere in the mystery of her suffering. In the mystery of her suffering, Jasmine was blessed with God's grace to sense and discern that God wanted her to continue to love her mother-in-law, even though she rejected and hated her throughout the 25 years. In the last session too, we saw how God showed his mercy on Lucy through Auntie Mabel's protection of her from her sons threatening her with a knife. In that particular true story, we learned that to live a more discerning life, we are called to do the right things in life. We are called to see beyond our own protective care and needs and protect other people from harm. Even if this demands that we pay a heavy price for such courageous stand or action. This is precisely what Jesus did for the sake and the salvation of the world. Jesus courageously, selflessly, and willingly obeyed his Father's will and paid the price of his suffering and death. If you and I reflect on our lives, we too can share how we are each challenged in different ways. Some of us are tested more severely than others. But regardless of how you and I are being challenged to live a more discerning life is to reaffirm our faith in God and never doubt that God in His mercy knows our needs and what we are going through in life. And in the mystery of God's love and mercy for us, He will answer and reach out to us in different ways and at different times and especially during our times of crisis. In a recent YouTube, 
There's a recording of a true story of Lee McSellan, who shared how he was dying under COVID-19 in an isolation ward in Belfast Island. In his desperation, he begged God for help. He shared, I remember really crying out to the Lord and ask him to help me and ask him even to supernaturally just do something that would encourage me and bring me through. I was in the isolation ward where no one else can get in, no pastor, no friend, no family members. And all of a sudden, this cleaner had come in and he was like a ray of sunshine. And he began to chat with me and he asked me how I was. And he would say to me about hanging in there. And then he shared that he was a missionary in Nigeria for 14 years and how God had saved many, many souls through his ministry and through the love of Jesus and the love of God that he proclaimed. And I'm saying to myself, wow, when God needs to reach you, he knows exactly the person to send. And he knows how to send this cleaner as no one else could get in. Before he left, the cleaner said to me, Son, could I pray for you? And I said, Yes, absolutely. And as he began to pray at the door, he began to ask God, the Holy Spirit, to visit me and heal my body and touch my lungs and spare my life and to continue to use me. And then he left. However, he would periodically walk past my window and give me a thumbs up. That night, I remember I started to turn around. Could it have been the prayer of a cleaner? As my strength returned, my appetite returned too. And I desired to have a packet of prawn cocktail crisp, Tato. So I asked the Lord, Lord, is it possible that you could get me a packet of prawn cocktail crisp and a can of Coke? The next morning, the same cleaner came and he passed me a bag through the door as he was not allowed to get into the ward and said, it is a gift from the Lord. And what was in the bag? A packet of prawn cocktail and a can of Coke. Sell and add as a message for you and for me and everyone listening. I want to encourage you out there today, he says. God knows what you need. He knows your heart's desires. He's an incredible saviour. Never underestimate what God can do for you. Thank you, cleaner too, whoever you are. If you are watching this video, I thank you for hearing the voice of God and reaching out to someone like me. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. And for those of you who do not yet know Jesus, I would encourage you to lift up your eyes and look to heaven and with a cry from your heart say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. May God bless you and may you know the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit as our Saviour and Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, some of us may say that this story, even though it is true, is only one of the many occasions in which God intervenes and saves a person from his death. While this is true, to live a more discerning life is to affirm the truth that God, regardless of how long or short a life we live, is always there for us and is always caring for our needs. In fact, this true story is not so much as to say that whenever we are desperately sick or dying, all we need to do is to pray and God will heal us. We know that this true story has a deeper message for us. We know that our relationship with God has to be deeper 
then and has to be beyond the inward looking and self-serving needs of our lives. If we want our relationship with our Lord to be a more mature and committed relationship. We know that this truth also applies in our relationship with people we love in our marriage, family and religious communities. If we want this relationship to be deep and mature, then our expectation from these people we love or want to love cannot be selfish and cannot be self-centered. On the contrary, a mature relationship expects a love that is self-sacrificing as in the case of Jasmine's relationship with God, who gave her a cross to bear for 25 years with her mother-in-law. And so as I conclude, let us note that this true story then reminds us that if you and I want to live a more discerning life, then Jesus is inviting us to deepen the maturity of our relationship with God and to live in His love and ways more wholeheartedly. In the fact that God was able to bring healing to Salon from his COVID-19 infection is an indication to us that God has the almighty power to do anything for our sake and salvation. But what God does in his love for us is what we must trust in him fully, for he is a God of love and mercy. However, if in relating to God, we only expect him to do what we want, then as in all relationships, we can see that such self-centered relationship of using God or others for what we want cannot be mature. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to having you in our next session as we continue to reflect on who God is for us more clearly so that you and I can live a more discerning life. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you are truly and physically present to us in the Blessed Sacrament. The same God who is our Lord and Saviour in the Gospel contemplation that we just reflected on and in the reflection of how to live a more discerning life that you truly is our model and our saviour. Be with us in all our needs and our desires to live your Father's will at all times. Give us a heart to be generous, to truly seek and live your Father's will with greater fidelity and generosity as we say. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to seek for reward, save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen.
Oh